What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Katia. Today, I've got a grammar lesson for you. We're going to look at the difference between if and whether. Sometimes they are interchangeable, but on occasion, only one option is correct. So today, we're going to learn how to use them correctly. And at the end of the lesson, there will be a short quiz so that you can put your knowledge into practice. Are you ready? If so, grab your notebook and let's kick off! First, we're going to look at when if and whether are interchangeable. So we can use any and there is no difference in meaning. And as a side note, weather is pronounced exactly the same as the weather outdoors. They are homonyms. So the first situation in which we can use if or whether is in reported yes or no questions. For example, do you enjoy teaching English? So the reported question would be he asked me if or whether I enjoyed teaching English. In this case, we can use if or whether. It doesn't matter. And one more example. He wanted to know if or whether I would go to the concert. Number two, we can use if or whether after verbs of doubting. After the expressions like I'm not sure, I don't know, I wonder, I doubt, I can decide, we can use whether or if. The first example, I don't know if or whether it's worth running the risk. And one more example, I'm not sure if or whether I want to go on a second date with him. The third case is in expressions with or not. For example, I need to know if or whether you're coming to the party or not. This or not at the end of the sentence is used to add emphasis. And one more example, let me know if or whether you're going to have lunch at home or not. Number four, whether if something or something. Let's look at two examples. The first one, I'd like to know if, whether, you're busy today or free. And one more example, tell me if or whether it's love or just a game to you. So in these cases, we can use both whether or if, but whether is more formal. So for example, if you write something formal, whether is preferable. And now let's move on to the second part of the lesson. We're going to look at when we can only use if and not whether. So we can only use if in conditional sentences. Let's look at some examples. The first conditional. If you need me, I'll be there at the drop of a hat. At the drop of a hat means immediately. The second conditional. If I won the lottery, I travel around the world. And the third conditional, if I had known you didn't have a car, I would have lent you mine. And now we're going to look at when we can only use weather. Number one, after prepositions. For example, it depends on whether it's sunny tomorrow. And one more example, I'm worried about whether she's all right. Number two, we use whether before an infinitive. For example, I don't know whether to do this course. One more example, I'm not sure whether to make a trip on my birthday. Number three, we use whether when we've got two options. For example, I can decide whether I'm going to the beach 
or the mountains this weekend? I've got two options, go into the beach or the mountains. And one more example, let me know whether you want me to bake brownies or a carrot cake. So the same in this case, we've got two options, a carrot cake and a brownie. Number four in the expression whether or not. For example, it's up to me whether or not I work on Saturday mornings. And one more example, I'm gonna do it whether or not you like it. In this case, whether or not means regardless, no matter if. Number five, we use whether in a clause acting as a subject or a complement. The first one, whether the new law is passed remains to be seen. Whether the new law is passed acts as a subject. The second example, whether he stays or leaves is not my concern. Whether he stays or leaves is the subject. And one more example, I don't care whether he's angry. In this case, whether he's angry acts as a complement. Number six, we use whether after verbs such as to advise, consider or discuss. Let's look at some examples. The first one, let's discuss whether it's a good idea to invest in bitcoins. And one more example, we should consider whether this plan is feasible. And last but not least, number seven, the structure noun plus as to plus whether, meaning about or concerning. The first example, there is a debate as to whether the third vaccine is necessary. And one more example, there was uncertainty as to whether the surgery would be effective. Some nouns that are commonly used in this pattern are debate, discussion, disagreement, doubt, question or uncertainty. And last but not least, the last segment for today, we're going to look at when we can use if and whether, but there is a difference in meaning. So we're going to look at one sentence. Let me know if you are coming. So in this case, if we use if, it means that please let me know only if you're coming which means that if you're not coming, it's not necessary to tell me. Whereas if we use whether, let me know whether you're coming, I want to be informed in either case. So let me know if you're coming, but also let me know if you're not coming. So this is the difference between if and whether. Let's start the quiz. And now let's move on to the quiz. So there will be 10 sentences and three options. If, whether, or both. So grab a pen and a piece of paper, read the sentences and choose the correct option. And after that, we're going to check the answers together.
and now I'm going to give you the correct answers. Number one, weather. It depends on whether it rains. We can only use weather in this case because it goes after the preposition on. So if you've got the correct answer, please put a tick. Number two, the correct option is weather. Let me know whether or not you're coming. It's not correct to say if not together. It would be fine if or not went at the end of the sentence. For example, let me know if you're coming or not. In this case, it would be correct. But if not together, it's not. Number three, both options are correct. Whether and if. I wanted to know whether, if, there was any chance of working together. Because it's a reported yes or no question. There is only one answer. Yes, it's possible or not. Number four, the correct option is whether. Please ask her whether she prefers sushi or poke bowl. In this case, we've got two options. That's why we need to use whether. Number five, we can use both options if and whether. I wonder if whether he told the truth. Because here we've got a verb of doubting. I wonder. Number six, both options are correct. Either whether or if. They asked me whether if I wanted to go surfing. So in this case, we've got a reported yes or no question. Number seven, the correct option is whether. It's up to you to choose whether you want to work in the morning or evening shift. In this case, we've got two options. That's why whether is needed. Number eight, both options are correct. I can decide whether if I should give it a go. So the same, we have a verb of doubting. And remember that to give it a go means to try to do something. Number nine, the only correct option is if, because we've got a conditional sentence. If you're short on money, I can lend you some. And last but not least, number 10, the correct option is whether. Whether it was the right decision is something that only time will tell. Because whether it was the right decision is the subject. So guys, how did the quiz go? Please let me know your score in the comments below. And guys, before we finish, I want to let you know, in case you're interested, that from October on, I like to create a few groups to help you prepare the FCE and the CAE exams. So if you'd like to have classes with me in a small group, please send me an email. You can find it in the description box. And I really hope you found this lesson useful and it helped you grasp this grammar aspect. If it did, please don't forget to give this lesson a huge thumbs up, to subscribe to my channel and catch me on Instagram for more Dill English. Thank you for having watched this video and see you next Sunday. Ciao for now!